Uh, this, is, this is about what is known as the 38th degree liniment in Missouri. And it is a kind of weird in a way. It's uh, at 30 degrees latitude, there's a whole series of things that stretch across the state from the eastern side to the western side. In fact, one of them is over in Kansas, uh, uh, eastern Kansas. But it is known as the 38th degree liniment because most of these are fairly close to 38, 38 degrees latitude. It is parts of the uh, St. Genevieve and Sims Mountain fault system. And uh, the major area of that fault is on that 38 degree liniment. In fact, there is uh, on that fault system uh, a series of very deep seated intrusive rocks that have been brought up, a rock called um, kimberlite. And uh, kimberlite contains a lot of this material. You can see on the screen that green mineral. Uh, it's a green mineral called olivine. It comes from the Earth's mantle. It comes from very, very deep within the Earth. And the St. Genevieve Fault System has actually penetrated deep enough into the Earth's mantle, that is below the crust, that uh, it has brought up material from the mantle, which includes this uh, green mineral olivine. Um, a general area of that also is another structure which contains some olivine containing uh, igneous rocks called the Furnace Creek structure. And uh, I'm not real familiar with it, but it's very similar to one I am familiar with, uh, south of Potosi, called the Dent Branch structure. In fact, in the big river, you can on the gravel bars, you can find chunks of this uh, uh, vesicular, uh, more or less a basalt. That's uh, not quite a basalt, but it's a uh, it's an extrusive igneous rock, and um, it has been brought up by the um, uh, magma coming in, in the Cambrian period, about half a billion years ago, came up and deposited this material very close to the Earth's surface. And it's called the, the Dent Branch Structure. Then there is, west of that, a series of faults that um, uh, look like they grade into what is called the Crooked Creek Structure. And the Crooked Creek Structure is a what is known as an astrobleam are a weathered and worn down uh, impact site or impact crater. The crater is gone. Uh, it has been eroded away millions of years ago. But the effects of the impact of the asteroid or very, very large meteor on the Earth's surface is still preserved. Preserved in the form of, among other things, this uh, rock that you see on the screen or on, on to the right is known as a brescia as a, as a uh, uh, impact brescia. And uh, the structure, the outer parts of it, which uh, contain the impact brescia, is about eight miles in diameter. It's big. It was a big crater at one time, probably around uh, 330 or so million years ago. West of the Crooked Creek structure, going farther west uh, toward Rala, uh, south of Rolla and east of Rolla, there's a series of iron ore deposits of uh, guthite and limonite that are peculiar, including the fact that they contain sometimes some beautiful geodes filled with, with amethyst, some very, very high quality amethyst that uh, occurred when they were mining these iron deposits around the turn of the 19th century. But um, west of there, uh, the next occurrence is an area around what is known as the town, the metropolis of Hazel Green, which is on, uh, originally was on Route 66, it's now on I-44. And it's a, another one of these intrusives of very deep-seated rocks that possibly came from the Earth's mantle. This uh, rock you see right here, this peridotite. Um, and it's a, um, uh, was found actually in drilling. Uh, and the outcrops are heavily covered by soil now, and there was a small outcrop at one time. I don't think it's there anymore. But um, it's known as the hazel green structure. And uh, west of there, not too far, is a, another astrobleam known as the Decaturville structure. And the Decaturville structure is the most peculiar of three astrobleams in Missouri that are all lined up on this 38th degree liniment. There's the 
uh, Crooked Creek structure, there's the Decaturville structure, and then to the west of that, there's what is known as the Wabloo Creek structure. But the Decaturville structure is peculiar in that the very center of it has um, metamorphic rocks and very coarsely crystalline igneous rock, a uh, what is known as a peridotite. Excuse the Decaturville structure is peculiar because in the center of it, in, in what is known as ground zero, which is where the actual uh, impacting object impacted uh, the Earth's surface, Missouri's surface, probably again or maybe around 300 million years, but possibly later, possibly younger, uh, depending whether the, all these are related to each other. But anyway, the uh, Decaturville structure has in its center a pegmatite, which is a very, very coarsely crystalline igneous rock that was brought up by what is known as rebound. The impact impacting object, the um, meteor or the very large, uh, or very large meteor or even a as small asteroid impacted uh, the Earth and uh, you get rebound when this happens. Material is brought up or shot back up in, with the rebound and uh, you can see this very nicely on the moon in the form of what are known as uh, spires in the center of lunar craters. Um, these uh, are from the same mechanism that brought up these igneous rocks in what is called the basement of very, very ancient Precambrian rocks uh, d dating probably somewhere around a billion and a half years old. But um, it brought up this pegmatite and it also brought up some metamorphic rock, rocks, a uh, rock known as schist, and you always want to say that properly. <laughs> mistake it. It's mm -hmm. called schist. And uh, this is brought up again by this uh, rebound at the very center of this uh, structure. And uh, then going farther west, and we're getting now over on the western edge of the Ozarks, is what is known as the Wablu Creek structure. And this is again an astroblame. Uh, it's the most recent one that's been worked out as to its astroblame and extraterrestrial origin. But um, uh, at ground zero uh, at the um, Wablu Creek structure, there are these things. Uh, these uh, what are called Wablu eggs. And they are uh, made of, ch of chert, but they're scattered fairly abundantly uh, right at ground zero. And uh, they're in fact used locally by uh, uh, local people to make interesting masonry and rock garden arrangements and so forth. Mm -hmm. But they're round rocks that were some way f uh, pr associated with that impact site. And um, that, uh, uh, again, shows a lot of rocks that are broken up and brecciated, that is, uh, uh, crumbled and, and broken, fractured by impact. And uh, you can see a chunk of this on the screen again from the uh, Wablu Creek structure. And then going farther west, you're leaving the Ozarks, you're getting up onto the what is known as the Cherokee Plains, which is the same as in eastern Kansas. And in the eastern part of Kansas, there is another one of these peridotite intrusives, something like uh, uh, this, uh, this material there that um, originated originally from the Earth's mantle. And um, anyway, this makes up the 38th degree liniment, which is one of the peculiar and very interesting aspects of Missouri geology. Whether these things are related to each other, some of them probably are, but probably, probably not all of them. In fact, probably not most of them, perhaps. It may be just a coincidence. But it's an interesting coincidence the way they all line up along the 38th degree parallel, the uh, latitude of 38 degrees um, yeah, I have a series uh, of books uh, uh, on uh, related material like this, including quite a bit on the Midwest, including Missouri. And uh, if you're interested in them, click on the uh, box that you see, and uh, uh, it'll give you more information. Perfect. Okay, we have one more Okay, now, now let's see. Let's get the and if you like this, please subscribe and hit the button below. Thank <laughs> you.